Hi, my young Ronel. You wonder whether the algorithms that are used by intelligence agencies to identify terrorists can be used also in the study and treatment of disease. Indeed, very, very similar tools to the ones that are used by intelligence agencies are used by computational biologists and medical informaticians to study disease. In the following units, we will see how to use large data sets and the networks of interactions between molecules to improve our understanding of disease and to come up with new treatments and new drugs. There is a whole discipline within biomedical research that is dedicated to the analysis of large biological systems. This discipline is called systems biology. It was born in the beginning of the millennium and it is focused on developing new tools for the analysis of large biological systems. Historically, over the last 50 years or so, biomedical research has increasingly zoomed in on individual molecules. Molecular biology infiltrated all fields of biomedical research and sent scientists and physicians in search of individual molecules, proteins or genes, that can explain complex biological phenomena. The typical question in biology has become, what is the gene or the protein that caused this disease? While this approach has led to amazing breakthroughs, discoveries and ultimately new therapies, it also became increasingly clear that life, with all its complexities, cannot always be reduced to the function or malfunction of one protein. In each second, millions of molecules in our cells interact with each other. Biological processes, we increasingly realize, are often executed by tightly coordinated networks of interactions between many genes, proteins, metabolites, and membranes. The coordination may be temporal. At some point in time, you should bind him. But in other times, you should not. The coordination may also be in space. Interactions may be allowed only in some tissues or in some cellular locations. The main undertaking of molecular biology was to meticulously study the physical, chemical, and structural characteristics of individual proteins or genes. We increasingly realize now that some aspects of life, some diseases, cannot be fully explained this way. Systems biology is set to devise tools that will allow us to ask new questions and gain new insights. Questions and insights that emerge from mapping and analyzing the complex networks of interactions within our cells. One of the main vehicles that allows this analysis is the representation of biological data as networks. In such network, we typically represent each gene or each protein as a node, ignoring for a moment everything we know about its physical, chemical, and biological characteristics. We describe it as a characterless junction, a position in a network of nodes. And then, every interaction between two genes, or every interaction between two proteins, is represented as an edge connecting two nodes. Each such network may represent a specific type of biological interaction. For example, one type of network may represent the network of expression control in an organism. That is, each node will be a gene, and each edge will mean that one of the connected genes control the expression of the other. 
it may be a transcription factor or an inhibitor. The resulting network with thousands of genes and tens of thousands of interactions, it has been discovered, can be an extremely useful tool for understanding biology. We'll see an example in a minute. Alternatively, in another type of networks, each node may represent a protein, and each edge may represent a physical interaction between two proteins. Such network will show us how information flows between proteins in a biological system. What can we gain from this representation? Here is one very simple example. As we said before, in many cases, a lot of research effort is invested in identifying the most important player in a biological process, the key gene or key protein. Network analysis has shown that simply counting how many edges a protein has in a network, that is, how many other proteins it interacts with, can instantly identify the most important player in a certain process, without testing the physical chemical characteristic of the protein, regardless of their structure or enzymatic activity. It has been shown that the essentiality of a protein to the well-being of an organism is correlated with the number of connections it forms in the network. Similarly, if we can detect within the network a region where many nodes are densely interconnected, we can often identify a module that is responsible for a specific activity of the organism. Using more sophisticated computations to analyze these networks can yield robust and often surprising insights. The same tools and computations that are used by law enforcement to map people to members of criminal groups, the same tools that allow marketing experts to identify influencers in a social network by seeing who's talking to who and when, are now used by computational scientists to parse the molecular networks that underlie disease.